What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna show you how to make a pretty cool patch um, using follow actions and a wavetable synth of your choice. Uh, I'm going to use Faceplant for this, but I'm sure you can create similar patches in any wavetable synth that lets you modulate a lot of parameters. Um, the reason I chose Faceplant is because I got pretty much unlimited um, modulators for this, so I can go pretty crazy with it and I don't feel limited limited in, in the amount of LFOs and such that I can use. So anyway, um, let's get started. So I'm gonna start by choosing random glitch sounds. I think th these particular samples are from Break Tweaker, um, which is basically a um, some kind of drum machine or, or synth from Isotope. I got it from on a discount years ago, but um, I never use it. Um, though I do like the samples that they have inside. So anyway, I'm gonna grab all of these, put it into the audio track over here. And we have in total 359 samples, as you can see here. And what I want to do is I want to uh, enable the launch, clip launch over here. I don't want to warp them. And then I want to let Ableton just randomize the sample being played back. So if I go here and choose any, any, and this means that it's going to play an eighth timing. And then I just hit play. Let's see if it works. Yeah. And I want to record that into a new audio panel. Gonna go for 16 bars. And I'm not gonna use all of it. I'm just gonna try and find a sequence that I like. And uh, let's head over here into the arrangement view and let's go through them. I'm gonna try different candidates, so. I think this one will do. This one will also do. Somewhere around here is also pretty cool. Nice. So we got three of them over here. That will be perfect because we're gonna make, we're gonna turn these into wavetables. And this is basically the process, one of the process that I did for when I was creating my uh, wavetable pack. So let's choose a new MIDI track. And I'm gonna get vital for this because it's just, superior when creating wavetables. And we're gonna grab this sample. I, actually, I think I have to... You know what? I think I have to actually export this because Windows is being a bitch and for some reason I can't just take this and drag and drop it here. Won't let me because I guess it's something to do with Windows working how it does, how it's programmed, because Ableton is actually hijacking the sample, which means that no other software can use it. So in order to, to uh, do this, we got to go here and we're going to export, export it. And let's choose a folder called 
think I have something here, my samples, yeah, in my browser. So, test one, and then export this. Test two, all you Apple's users can laugh in Apple while I do this. Then we got test three. Cool. So this means I should now have my samples in here. So if I search, yeah. So since this is a new sample, Ableton is not using it, which means I can export it into a wavetable. Let's see how it sounds. Going to take an LFO. So let's see. Sounds pretty true to the source, actually. Nice. Then we can take test two, grab it in here. and then test three over here. Cool. So, um, and then one, what I wanna do is I wanna just export it as a wavetable or wav file back into the my samples folder over here and this was test one so I'm gonna overwrite that gonna do the same with this one test two and lastly this one Test three. So far, so good. And we can delete these actually. And then I'm going to take a serum for this. The reason being, um, I find it easier to normalize the samples in serum. So we're going to go back into our folder, my samples over here, and then we're going to get test one. Oops. That was the wrong one. FFT2048 is going to work for this since we've already uh, used it in, in um, or we exported it from um, Vital. So Vital is going to provide us the correct information for Serum in order to read the sample. So they pretty much sound the same as they would be in, in, in uh, Vital if we listen to it. So let's make a two-bar LFO here so you can hear it. So that's why I use Vital before exporting it into Serum because Vital's um, algorithm works better for this, uh, in my opinion. Um, so let's go back in here. And I'm going to try and see if it's going to work because if I normalize all the samples, we're going to lose... We're just gonna, we're going to lose the, the um, what you call it, the dynamic range. We're going to reduce it, so um, I'm just going to see how it sounds. Yeah, good. So far, so good. And then I'm going to export it again into and override it. So test one. Then we go back into oscillator B and go here, process, normalize each gain separately. And then we're just going to listen to how that sounds. Perfect. Then we go back in here. We can export that and go for test two. Save aborted. An error occurred while trying to save the file. And why is that? Um, 
Is it still in use, maybe? Let's delete Bartle. Okay, no problem. We can go for test 2.1. There we go. And then we can go for the number 3 over here. And we're going to do the same, normalize each gain separately, just going to audition how it sounds. Perfect, then we go to export and see if this one works to override it. Yeah, coolio. So now into the actual patch creation that I had in mind. So let's go into faceplant. And we're gonna load up a wavetable. And we're gonna drag, try this one first. And it's the same idea, since Vital already done all the processing for us, uh, Faceplant's gonna read this back exactly as such. And I'm gonna have a bipolar modulation on the wavetable frame. And if I put it at 128 frames, that's half of 256. That means if I grab a random over here and then smooth it up a little bit, I want to be quite steppy, but not too steppy, if that makes sense. So you see it's quite smooth when it's moving around. I'm going to map that to the frame 100%. So it's going to be 50% plus and 50% minus in the modulation. Where's our face plant? Here it is. No. It's like a robotic scanner or something. I don't know. Try. So you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, let's make another group. And let's 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 rename this to test one. Test two. And rename this. If I hold control and press on the group, it's gonna create another group with the same name. So oops. So let's go here, test three. And we're gonna load a wavetable in here as well. And we're gonna do the same right here. And let's go 2.1, because that was the one that worked. And then we had test three over here. And I'm gonna turn off these. And I'm gonna do the exact same and if I right click here, I can type 128. Oops, 128. My fat sausage fingers just mistyped that. There we go. And right over here. So you can see that it's moving right here. So we can have different flavors. If I could create an output as well. I forgot about that, so don't forget the output. Yeah, coolio. So let's go back to the one here and we can minimize these for now. And so what do I want to do? I want to make some kind of glitchy, weird effect um, with this patch. So, uh, and when something sounds broken, a bit crush effect is absolutely perfect for this. Let's go for the old school samplers. They use 12 bits most of the time, like the old Akai samplers. Or maybe 8 bit even. Let's go for 8 bit. Cool. Um, and then I want to have, I want to have a reverb as well. 
and I want to be very small in size and a lot of early reflections. So it's gonna get. Sounds very close to us. Nice. Maybe a little bit more smoothing. Nice. Then we're going to have an EQ. And we are going to get rid of the unnecessary highs. And we're going to get rid of the unnecessary, unnecessary lows. Maybe do a little boost around here. Cool. Um, and we're not actually done yet. What we can do now is if we grab this and we're going to let it move the bit crusher around as well when this one is moving in the opposite direction. So when it goes positive over here, it's going to go negative. So it's going to crush it even more. grab a delay maybe if you want to have some delay effect to it but to be honest um, these type of sounds I don't really like delays on them so I'm gonna try something else I'm going to try a not a chorus, maybe a resonator. And if we grab our note modulator over here and just max it up, it's gonna follow the notes. And if we tune it to A2, it's gonna follow like, if I press G for example, or a D or an F or an E, it's gonna resonate at those frequencies as well. Now I don't want it to be... can we do? Could of course distort a bit if we want. Nice. So far so good. So far so good. Um, and now that's our basic patch. Test with the others. And maybe this one. That's pretty cool. Um, and what we can do now, if I grab a, another random And I put it at smooth at 100%. And we're just going to up this a little bit. Because I want to, like, this is cool when it just scans through the table like this. But uh, sometimes we want a little bit more movement. So I'm going to dial back the uh, range it's working on. And then I'm going to modulate the frame at 100%. But since it's very narrow modulation, it's you can max it up like so. So let's map this to a macro. 
Let's see. So if it's at max, I want that to at 12%, yeah. Or actually, no, I want to be the opposite. So I want it plus 12% because I want to, just feels better if I turn it up, it's gonna open up the modulation. So let's call this one um, scanner. <laughs> And what we want, since notice how when it goes at max, it's like stays there. What we can do is if we dial this one back a little bit, like 12% or so. Nice. And um, what more can we do? Let's make a macro called malfunction. Already sounds malfunction, but uh, it's gonna sound even more malfunction with this little trick. If we grab A, let's just make another group and call this modulators. And I'm gonna add a wave table over here and we're going to make a, you know what? Let's make it easy for us. Let's go for an analog, and then we go for the triangle wave. Let's, um, and let's FM this a little bit. Or modulate the phase. This is fun. This is absolutely crazy. Let's do the same over here, 50%. And do the same over here, 50%. And now we maybe we want to have this malfunction, so we'll dial up 50%. Like so. <laughs> Cool. Um, could grab another random and dial it up a little bit, something like that, or maybe smooth it off a little bit. And we could basically set it in unipolar. <laughs> We could try different... Um could try different shapes. This sounds like a little alien or something. Pretty cool. I think I'm gonna leave that one. Let's try with the others. Maybe dial up the mid crush a little bit. Cool. 
So, uh, what more can we do here? Maybe, 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 maybe. I'm fucking stupid. The distortion didn't work there. Let's move this one down here and gonna move this one. right here. Cool. So now it's even on all of them. We could also, um, with this random, move it to panning actually. And I'm just gonna, I think we can get away with using the stereo over here because then it's gonna pan all of them instead of me mapping it to the same. Like, first I need to map it over there, and then I need to map it over here, and so on, so on. We can just use the stereo plugin over here, and then we can go right, uh, put in the last ch in the last chain here, uh, and then we pretty much. <laughs> Sounded pretty cool when it was quite a large room, but very close to us. Gonna keep it like that. Um, then we could bring in a limiter over here. Put in the last Maybe want to. Yeah, um, I think I'm satisfied with the patch as is. Um, I don't think we need to add much more. What we could do, maybe we can try, see how it sounds with dispersion. <laughs> nah, don't want dispersion on this one. Oh, I just remember we could use a pitch shifter actually, and we're gonna map this to the pitch shift. I'm gonna have a, another random as well. Smooth it up, increase the rate. <laughs> Just mind the latency down here when you're using the pitch shift because it's gonna it's going to, to increase the latency but uh, yeah anyway I think the patch is done I'm gonna have, add a bit crush as a as a macro as well because it sounded cool without the bit crush too. Oh. 
so yeah, that's how we can make like a type of a glitch table and use that glitch table in order to make a whole new patch out of it uh, without just using the sample as is. So there's a lot of power in this, I find. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it um, and see you in the next one.